rough And it takes all that you've got But he's been here Just waiting for you to knock To take his hand Hi, welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight is our Thanksgiving special. The Rock House is filled with friars, MFVA friars, and we're going to talk about what we're thankful for. And we have Father Anthony here, our community servant, for the opening segment. And I wanted, Father, if you could be with you too, Doug. Good to have you, Father. Set the stage. <laughs> and uh, I know guys, people at home watching uh, the network, they see a lot of us on at the mass, different things. Uh, tell the audience about our community. Well, uh, we were founded in the late 80s, 1987, by Mother Angelica. And really her uh, mission for us was to support the work of EWTN, or the work of evangelization through the media, and also to uh, work with the sisters to care for their spiritual and sacramental needs, um, with a special focus to the fallen away Catholic. So mm -hmm. EWTN, by preaching the gospel, uh, day in and day out, invites many people to uh, not only a knowledge of Jesus Christ, but a relationship with Him. And there are many who have uh, fallen away from the practice of their faith who are searching. Mm -hmm. And so it's casting the nets, you might say, and really doing it with the spirit of St. Francis, who wasn't preaching in all a big, heady, intellectual way, but very much uh, like Mother Angelica would teach. Mm -hmm. um, very practically, very down to earth, and really with a great appeal. Mother, at the heart of her message so often was that message, Jesus loves you, right. and to invite people uh, to love him in return. So I think we've been doing that all these years, and little by little we're getting older. Uh, our viewers tonight uh, <laughs> will want to share our family with you and uh, let, the, let the viewers know some of the friars and hear what they're up to. Mm -hmm. And another element of our charism, we have the Blessed Sacrament uh, behind us. We have it on our, our habit here. Mother Angelica is a poor Claire, perpetual adoration. And uh, so we have a contemplative dimension to our community that adoration is a special place. Absolutely. Right? And, uh, you can't give what you don't have, so right. we have to go to the wellspring. Right. Yeah. right. This isn't the actual Blessed Sacrament, it's a picture. <laughs> <laughs> just, just in case somebody's wondering, is that really a monstrance back there? It's and a picture of one. And we have a net on the set there, too. Yeah. That's the net to cast, right? That yeah. We're fishers of men, so uh, we're part of the new evangelization, trying to reach, as Father Anthony said, to bring back uh, uh, the lost. To bring them back. And I've seen you use that net, Father. Yeah. People walking down the sidewalk out in front of the chapel, <laughs> throwing the net. Well, Get that's not mass. exactly what she mother had in mind, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you're using that, so, yeah. Did you have any questions for Father? Uh, I do, but I'm going to reserve them for later because I get to lead this show. I love this one. This is one of my favorite ones to do throughout <laughs> the year because we get to dig into the, 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 the wonderful side that people don't hear much about, the personal side, mm -hmm. because you all look so wonderful when you're preaching your homilies on and TV. And we really are, Doug. And you we are. Really you're are. amazingly <laughs> wonderful people. But we've got to ask some questions that I know viewers out there want to know because when I travel around the country, people ask me, what are they really like? And so we're going to ask a few questions tonight to find out what you really like. No worries. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, look, I'm not even shaking. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're also going to talk about uh, gratitude, things we're thankful for tonight. And we wish all our viewers a happy Thanksgiving, whereas we head into Thanksgiving here next week. And we want you to, to be, join us in this special to give thanks to God for his providence over us. We're all very thankful for uh, the providence you all uh, give to us and supporting the network by your prayers and donations and especially for our community. We know so many people are praying for us. I know, Doug, you tell me that every week. Oh, everywhere I go, about. people are always talking about, you know, how wonderful it is to watch the network and watch mm -hmm. you, you gentlemen preach and the different work that it's being done through EWTN, through the Friars, and it right. just means a lot to them. Right. I always say you're kind of like a SEAL team right. in, <laughs> in the Catholic faith out there doing some real serious, uh, you know, yeah. mission work. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. We definitely want to make, uh, throw out an invitation on the young people watching tonight as well. Father Pascal will speak a little bit more about it in his segment, but to uh, go to our website, think about whether the Lord is calling you to serve him as a Franciscan missionary of the eternal word. Right. Well, sit back and enjoy our Thanksgiving special. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Life on the Rock. I'm Doug Berry, along with Father Mark Mary, the Rock House Compadres. This is the Thanksgiving special, and we're very happy that you're with us tonight. Uh, this particular episode, we have with us a very brown set, as you can tell. <laughs> the chairs, the habits. Uh, I even wore this particular shirt in honor of the fall theme that we've got going here. So, <laughs> Father Joseph, good to have you on the show again. Good to be with you, Doug. We have Brother Leo and Brother Bernard. Good to have you uh, both as well. And throughout the show, we're going to be switching out with other friars and getting their insight into what's going on in the world of politics, the world of the rise <laughs> of ISIS, and uh, just other things going on in society, mm -hmm. as well as what we're thankful for. Mm -hmm. um, but let's get right to it, Father. Uh, on a very serious note, um, when I travel around the country, one of the number one questions I get from people is, how's Mother Angelica doing? You have mm -hmm. a regular communication or contact with her. Can you fill in the audience, the world right now as to the status? Yes, we have mass in her room every Sunday for her. And uh, that's also one of the questions that I get off, uh, often asked, and they'll say, give mother a hug and ki a kiss. Mm -hmm. So the last time I had a mass where I said, mother, I got a hundred kisses to give you <laughs> from all the people that love you and still watch your programs. And, um, you know, for the most part, she's bedridden now. She's bedridden, but she prays. The, the, the sisters describe her as between heaven and earth, you know, mm -hmm. that she continues to pray for the network. It continues to grow. And I was really touched last time that I had mass for her in her room. Um, after mass, she reached out her hand to take my hand and just looked at me and we just uh, looked at each other for a little mm -hmm. while. And it's just great. I'm really thankful that she's still with us. She's still praying for us. She's still a mother for us. Can she, can she talk really at all? Much? She'll say an occasional word to the sisters, mm -hmm. but it, it's rare. Mm -hmm. But you know from her eyes, she's communicating, you know, that she knows you, she recognizes you, she prays for you. You know, her, her story is so amazing in that, you know, she was just incredibly gifted, natural, down-to-earth, genuine communicator. Mm -hmm. You know, she could verbalize things so well, she could communicate so well with her words, her expressions, and so forth. And through that, God creates this, you know, brings this network into this time of the world to do, you know, great work, thank God. Um, and then that God would remove that particular gift of, you know, the verbal yes. uh, ability that she had and, and bring her to this state. But now this really can even deepen, can't it, what mm -hmm. she gives to the network and, and to the world as a gift of herself. You know, there's a lot of similarities with the life of St. Clair, who's a patroness of television. Mm -hmm. And the last 20 years of St. Clair's life, she spent an illness, a lot of mm -hmm. that. Um, so it was the last Christmas of St. Clair's life that she wasn't able to attend the Mass, the Midnight Mass. But, and she was upset about that, but suddenly she could see what was going on. <laughs> she could hear the music going on. So it was like Pope Pius XII said, we'll make her the patroness of television as television was growing in its use. Hmm. So now a daughter of St. Clair, Mother Angelica, has mm -hmm. been raised up by the Lord to bring the television mass to so many people throughout right. the world. And that is something that you're all so well known for is, I mean, really what you do in the media, I mean, as it is right now, or 
those of you watching the show right now, we have a, a friar in his brown habit with the headset on, floor directing. You know, we, 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 we have this great gift of many of uh, the friars over the years who have been involved in that. You know, Brother Leo, you've done that many times too. And you know, you, you, you dust us up. I would say it's an anti-shine powder, not makeup, anti-shine powder before we go on set here. Um, what's it like for you, brother, to, to be involved in this ministry, in this work? And, and is there, what kind of thankfulness do you have to know that you're involved in such a powerful ministry? Well, we use a tackle box to make it more manly. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, we do, yeah, that's right. Tackle box, yeah. Um, I'm very thankful for being able to serve in many different ways, like floor directing is one of them, but every now and then I get to run a camera, which I'm not that good at, but I <laughs> do that too. But we, you know, we do all types of stuff. Mainly we work a lot with the pilgrims, giving tours and um, mm -hmm. taking care of them. So. And about the tours, that's a big deal because, again, when I travel, people will say to me all the time, oh, I was down there and I got a great tour and the brothers are wonderful who do that. Describe just a little bit about what that's like to meet people from all over the world, all over, all over the world, really, because they come from other continents and they come through here. And that's exciting to see, you know, the Australian or the Irish or the English. I mean, what's that like to, to, uh, to give tours to people just knowing you're bringing pilgrims to something that they've watched on TV or heard on radio for so many years sometimes, and now they're finally here. Describe that. Uh, you just have to make up new things all the time. <laughs> 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 no, um, pretty much we, it's just different people have different personalities, mm -hmm. so you just have to work with each one and the questions they ask, but yeah. it's nice to see each person, to see them from the outside, because we reach many different people all, all through the whole world, but we don't always get to see them. So when they come to see us, we get to see them, so mm -hmm. we see the people that we're reaching. So it's and for the audience amazing. listening and watching right now, how many years have you been uh, here at the network? Uh, 22 years. 22 years, and you're a permanent brother. Then. Yes. That's right, permanent brother. And Brother Bernard, how long have you been at the network? 22 years. 22 years, <laughs> all right. We were novices together. Okay, okay. And you're a permanent brother then mm -hmm. as well. Right. And your duties uh, primarily are what around here? Most of the time I've been doing our bookkeeping work but we all do different things. We, we never have just one job. Mm -hmm. So over the years, I've done other things like at the network, I've done producing and directing. Um, I was the director for the benediction from Hansville for about six years. <laughs> and so uh, that was one of the things I've done, mm -hmm. given tours, clean the bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> A little gardening maybe here and there? <laughs> no, no gardening. Oh, okay. <laughs> but now, Father Joseph, you're big on the gardening, right? Yes, we've yeah. got to have fresh greens. There you, you know, go, there you healthy. go. We've got a picture up right now, Father. <laughs> oh, there he is. Yeah. That's a string yeah. bean. <laughs> <laughs> Those are yard-long green beans that a lady up in Hansville gave me. I planted them this year, and they actually are a yard-long, three-foot-long green beans. Oh, my goodness. You don't need a lot of those to... <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> One bean, cut it up. One bean for a meal. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now, what kind of changes have happened in the last year? Anything that, that stands out that, that you've really seen unfold? with the work that you do down here? It was uh, wonderful. I had the chance with uh, Father John Paul to go to the canonizations of St. John Paul II mm -hmm. and St. John the Twenty-Third. So that was a wonderful experience. You know, it was, it was kind of funny. We were in the piazza, and two different people came up to me, and they said, uh, Oh, Father Cantalamesa, can we have your autograph? <laughs> <laughs> they thought I was the papal preacher, you know, Father Cantalamesa. Uh. And, uh, I thought they were misspelling on, your yeah. name on the <laughs> network on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little funny moment. I had to convince them, no, I'm not Father Contilla Mesa. They wanted to get in. You know? sure. <laughs> 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 but it was a wonderful experience, a million people there, mm -hmm. and uh, just the s celebration of uh, the new mm -hmm. saints. And I had an opportunity mm -hmm. to meet as a seminarian, as a kind <coughs> of priest, St. John Paul II. Mm -hmm. And so to be there for his canonization was a wonderful, wonderful event. What was the experience like when you met him? I remember I, when I was a priest, I had gone there and uh, I was the only priest concelebrating with him. There was also a bishop concelebrating. And um, so after mass, we had the opportunity to meet him. And I said, your holiness, Mother Angelica and the sisters, the friars send their love and their prayers. And he said, oh, Mother Angelica, Mother Angelica. And uh, at that time, he was already failing a little bit. And he stumbled, and he grabbed me right by the wrist. Mm. 
and that's when the photographer took the picture. Mm -hmm. So I have that picture, and I always take it as uh, him saying to me, Coraggio Giuseppe, have <laughs> courage, <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but just when he blessed me, I just felt this fire, mm -hmm. you know, uh, his holiness, that, uh, and the blessing as a vicar of Christ. So it was something I will never forget and always treasure. Do you miss him? I do. Yeah. I do. I was thinking that this year. <laughs> <laughs> I really miss him. <laughs> Yeah, I do too. And, yeah. and, and I mean, uh, uh, nothing against the current Pope or Pope sure. Benedict, but mm -hmm. there was something about John Paul II, you know, growing up mm -hmm. in his time period, you know, when he came to America, you know, in, in 93 and said, you know, young people, you should not be ashamed of the gospel. And yes. he said, no, you should be proud of the gospel. I was at Cherry Creek State Park and I just, there's something about, he had a charisma and a yeah. magnetism about him that you see even in the, in the photographs of him. He lit a fire in yeah. America and many vocations, mm -hmm. many uh, sprang from that, that event in Denver. And there's a great quote, and I, I, I know this is a, it's, an, it's, a, it's, it's a nice show, it's a Thanksgiving <coughs> special, but Father Mark, you know me, I have to bring a little, little weight and heaviness to it <laughs> because we're dealing with what I refer to you as almost like a SEAL team in the, mili in the spiritual sense, uh, the Franciscan friars, because there are so many people around the world that by the grace of God are affected by the work that this, that this network does. And you have been obviously the men chosen to be in this position as brothers and priests. And I think um, from my perspective as a layman, you know, always referring to priests in particular as spiritual officers you know, on the spiritual battlefield, um, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of challenges going on. And um, you know, when you, you see you know, what, what's happening and what's unfolding before us right now, I think back to the words of St. John Paul II before he was made Pope, when he was still Cardinal Wattia, 1976, mm -hmm. and he said that we are entering an age of the, this final battle. And he really broke that down into detail between, life, between the life and the culture of death, between the church and the anti-church, Christ and the anti-Christ. And he said, this is a time that is necessary for us to really rise up and really, really take courage. I'm paraphrasing the quote there. But when you hear something like that from a man like him, and then like you said, Father, he set a fire. Mm -hmm. And he traveled so much, even with his illness, yeah. to let the world know the mm -hmm. gospel is still the gospel. The yes. truth is still the truth. Uh, Brother Bernard, start with you first, and then we'll go to uh, Brother Leo and, then, and, and wrap the Father here in the last couple minutes. What's that mean to you to know that you're, you're involved at this day and age at this time when we were told back in 76 that we're in the midst of a, of a pretty serious uh, you know, battle between life and death in our world. Well, I, I'd say I feel unworthy to be involved in something like that, but also realize that you have to rely on the grace of God too. And where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. Mm -hmm. And we already know what the final result will be. So, I don't want to make predictions, you know, and just go a day at a time. I think that's something Mother Angelica taught us very well to uh, live in the present moment because that's really the only moment we have. We can't live in the past or the future. And when we anticipate what might happen, we're often wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, and God has many, many different ways that He can accomplish things. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good point. You know, God has his ways of doing these things and we can't, we can't fret or worry about them. We just have to, you know, stay, stay true to the mission, true to, true to our vocations and keep forging ahead. Brother Leo, what about you? You know, being called up at this particular time to wear the official Catholic Navy yeah. Seal brown habit. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do good in the water. Uh, <laughs> I'm thankful to be born in this time period because it's, God knows what he's doing and he knows this is where he called me. I don't think I'll do very good in those old time periods. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that too. People say, oh, I wish I'd lived a long time ago. It's like, oh, I kind of like indoor plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, but then again, who knows? Back then we didn't know about indoor plumbing. We probably would have been fine back then. <laughs> Brother Joseph, what about you? What message do you give to the world of mm -hmm. hope? I mean, an encouragement, um, you know, uh, I know, um, uh, you know, you, you have your, your ear to what's going on around the world. You have to uh, pay attention to what's going on. And, and there's, some, there's some discouragement, some fear, some concern, mm -hmm. um, and understandably so. So what do you say to the world, uh, the viewers and the listeners now about really where the hope needs to be? Yeah. 
in these times? Well, I often say to the pilgrims who come to the shrine where I'm now working or that I meet here when I give talks, there's a lot of things that cause us anxiety when we look at the world, we look at the news, we see all of these different things. But I said, if we know the Lord today, He's not going to abandon us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's really the key. If we know the Lord today, then we may have difficulty, and he's, he told us we would have trouble in this world, but he said, have courage, I've overcome the world. So he's gonna be with us, and if he's with us, we can go through anything. Mm -hmm. If we don't know the Lord, then yeah, <coughs> then we should be full of anxiety and fear. But if we know the Lord, <coughs> he's gonna be with us tomorrow. Yeah, yeah and that, that's a great point to, to wrap the segment up on, Father, because you think about Calvary, I still say, you know, if there was ever a, a dark moment that we would have had reason to believe the mission of our Lord failed, it would have been hmm. on Good Friday. Yeah. If CNN and all those other networks would have been there with the camera on, they'd have said, look at him there dying on the cross. He saved others. He couldn't save himself. They would have been shouting from the streets, prove who you are. Mm -hmm. They would have had correspondence and all sorts of people out there talking about how everything he said and did just really, really didn't happen, did it? It really wasn't real. Mm -hmm. And then three days later, he proved them all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and he'll do it again and again and again. Yes. So like he said, we just got to know him now. We'll know him tomorrow. That's great. That's right. Thank you so much for being on the segment. All and right. thank you, gentlemen, for all your good hard work. A little fire for right there. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. Just gotcha. <laughs> all right. Thanksgiving special continues after this break. Don't go away. More of the uh, Catholic Church special Navy SEAL Franciscans on after this break. And welcome back to Life on the Rock. This is our special Thanksgiving special. It's our special Thanksgiving special, as opposed to the normal Thanksgiving special. This is the special one. And we have a, a new group of special uh, Franciscans on here. We have Father Leonard. Good to have hey, you on, Father. Good to see you, man. All right. All right. Yeah. Father Pascal. Yeah. yeah. And Brother John. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Good to have you on, gentlemen. Yeah, it's good to be here. Good we're to see good, you again. We're going to call this our recruitment segment because mm -hmm. we are kind of a bit of a slight military theme going here because mm -hmm. you talk about, you know, in the world today, you are really some of the most yeah. visible um, priests and brothers that are out there because of mm -hmm. EWTN. And uh, of course, we're always hoping and praying that God will call more mm -hmm. workers to the vineyard. And um, there are always young men out there who are um, easily, as we all can be, easily distracted from hearing God's call. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you been a priest, Father? A little over two years. Okay. How's it going so yeah. far? It's great. It's, going well. it's a great life. All right. Wonderful life. Hey, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you never really You can retire. be all you can be and more, you know? There you go. That's, I like it. The few, the proud, the That's priest. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's it. Um, and really, it's, it's a whole different level of, 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 of you know, spiritual battle. That's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, as priests, you, you've just got weapons up your sleeves, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. The weapons of righteousness. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, to hear confessions, I got to yeah. ask you, young priest, is Father yeah. Pascal, how long have you been a priest now? For over a year. Just over a year. All right. And, and Brother John, what, what are your plans? Is the Lord calling you to priesthood, do you know, or just... I feel God calling me to the priesthood. Um, so that's where my heart is set. And how long um, have you been here at the network? I've been here a little over three years. Okay. So I, I entered back in uh, October of 2011. All right. So. And you do a lot of the floor directing for the show. I do. I do. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah, a musician. A little bit, yeah. A oh, little okay. bit of a guitarist. Oh, guitar, okay. Much, all right, ukulele at all? or No, just strictly just guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. All right, are you going to play something for us tonight, or is that that's not in the plan? Uh, I don't think it's in the plans, but. <laughs> okay. You got any albums coming out? Nothing? Mm. Uh, it's not looking too good. But. <laughs> yeah. All right, maybe yeah. next time. Maybe next time. All right. So, but, but back to the idea that there's a lot of young men always listening, always, you know, who might be watching the show. Mm. Um, I have four sons myself. You know, what message do you have for them about being open to the call of God to the priesthood, especially this particular order here? 
at the network? Well, this is a great life. You know, the, the priesthood is living the life of Jesus Christ, experiencing his life in a more intimate and a profound way. Uh, you know, we are in the person of Christ. It's Christ who, who works and acts in and through us when we're offering Mass and we're uh, giving all of the sacraments. It's Christ right there present. And, you know, this is, it's beautiful, it's wonderful to, um, you know, to be able to have this vocation. You know, it's a, it's a great gift. And, yeah, it's like, you know, before I became a priest, you know, you kind of have your impressions of it. But once you, once you get into the life, it's shock and awe, man. It, it's, <laughs> it's just amazing, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, you got your ups and downs and all that, but it's all, it's all rooted in prayer. You go back to prayer and then you think, wow. I'm living like Christ, and it just makes it all the more beautiful. And that is one of the problems, isn't it, for any vocation, you know, priesthood, I know in married life, is uh, we have to have a deep prayer life right? first, because without mm -hmm. the prayer life, we lose sight of what the vocation's all about. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, so prayer, yeah, that's what, it, what being a priest is all about, is living prayer, being a living prayer. So that's also... Living like Christ. So that's also going to be necessary in order to get to understanding where God's calling us in a vocation, is we have to have a prayer life to begin yeah. with in order to hear Him mm -hmm. speak into our hearts. You're right. Brother Mark? Father Leonard, you have a, a love for preaching, I'd say, and you can be creative with your approach. Why don't you tell us about how you approach preaching? How I approach preaching? Well, you know, uh, uh, it's a work of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, I try to be, uh, to be very practical and, um, uh, you know, down to earth. Uh, I, I try to pre give a presentation in a way where, where it's comprehensible, people can understand, you know, and relate to everyday life. Uh, you know, try to be simple in the approach as well, but but, uh, you know, do my best to, to do it with love. You know, I think that's, that's what, what we all need is to be loved. And, you know, when someone knows that, that they're being loved or they're being spoken to in love, and, you know, it just makes it worth listening, you know, mm -hmm. and when you speak from the heart, you know, and that, you know, they, yeah, you know, it's, it's nice. It's, it's, it's more, it's easily received. It makes me know? think a friend of mine yeah. says that, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, how much you love. Yeah, so you think about Jesus, you know, all the time. Think about Jesus preaching. So love for the word, for the fire, for the, for the word of God. I like St. Paul, you know, um, like reading the Gospels. It's, it's, yeah, it's great. It's when, it, when it comes to love and preaching about love, Father Pascal ask you this, because, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're still getting your feet wet, you know, in some ways with regards sure. to getting out there in this battle. These veterans like Father Mark, Father Joseph, Father Anthony, you know, old they, school. Old school. They got yeah. the they got the wounds, <laughs> the, the battle scars, they're battle tested, battle hardened. They'll yeah. preach anything unafraid uh, to get out there and just cry from the rooftop. And I know you're that way already, but <laughs> when it comes to, to preaching in love, yeah. our world today is misunderstanding that. Right. You know, and I think some of that even there was some confusion even with the recent synod about sure, sure. what true love is, what true mercy is. But mercy is, even one of the spiritual works of mercy, the first one is to admonish the sinner. And then, of course, second, to instruct the ignorant. That there, the true love, true mercy, also carries with it instruction of the truth that frees the sinner. Um, speak to that if you can, knowing that, that you're out there and you're, on, you're, you're out there preaching to millions through the airwaves. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, just recently I had the chance to talk to a media class at, at a secular high school which most are, the just public school. And I, it was, I had EW10 pamphlets and, and they said, oh, you, you can't hand that out. You know, so I just think, okay, I gotta think of a little more about how I'm gonna talk. But just to, to say, especially as a religious, what we bring is we're doing the same things. We're, we're working in the media as, as our community, but in, in other things, you know, nursing, teaching, but we bring God. And so a lot of people, they don't, they're, they're kind of, they're still unsure, like, is God really worth it? Like, can mm -hmm. I really stake my life on God? And I think it's that, that kind of um, point that once, once God really becomes not just real, obviously you have to believe in God, but, but it's like God is actually God. God's not like us. God's to be worshiped, and, and he, but not just that, he's with us, and especially just living in, in grace. So that, that whole point, that, that the joy of actually being with God and living a life which, which is really pleasing mm -hmm. to him, uh, that, that's where, where so many people need to be they need some help to, to remember 
you know, the joy of the gospel. Right. And so, mm -hmm. right. But. And there is a real joy, isn't there, in, in, of course. in being close to God and being in, on a path that is ordered. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas our world right now is all about, you know, the chaos and the craziness and, and, and one of the biggest struggles we have today. I know people say, well, you know, we've had this. We've always had sin. We have. But it's, it's different in the sense today that, you know, we've got 4G sin now, right? You can go to your smartphone mm -hmm. and you can be distracted by gazillions of things. Um, some good, but a lot of them either neutral, waste of time, and a lot that are very bad, very evil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the access to these things is rampant like it's never been, and it's only going to go more the direction, mm -hmm. which makes it more challenging, I know, for right. yourselves when it comes to preaching, mm -hmm. when it comes to really, yeah. you know, making that message clear. Does that come to your mind much, Father, when you're oh, preaching? Oh, of course. Yeah, but, hey, when I come, when preaching, yes, you know. That's why I try to be as down to earth as possible and try to include things, you know, that are recent and current inside my homilies. Um, but it also comes to my mind um, because, you know, I also um, oversee the community's media website and social media and all that. Mm. And so we try to be as active as possible, you know, uh, um, posting pictures, posting out just words and messages and things like that, little, little quotes and stuff and um, to reach everybody, to reach you know, to, to be, be active with the, with the 4Gs and the cell phones mm -hmm. and the iPhones and all of that stuff and the iPads and smart pads and everything. So, so yeah, we, we do our best to stay active in that area as well. You know, social media, Twitter and Instagram. And in fact, if, if uh, all of you out there, you can hey, go uh, follow us on Twitter or right. Facebook or Instagram or YouTube and all that. And, you know, we got some good stuff out there. Yeah. And, and, you know, Brother John, for you, uh, as you continue to discern this process, and is, is this part of the appeal of this particular order, that there is this, this kind of touch with the media that, that is a form of evangelization? Oh, absolutely. And that's, that's what drew me into the community, was really just the outreach of the youth and of all people, but it was primarily through the uh, media, because I have always kind of believed if you're going to reach somebody probably around my age, they're going to be in front of a TV or a computer or some cell phone. Um, and it's just a great way to evangelize. And that's really how I came back, or I wouldn't say came back, but how I grew in my Catholic faith, uh, especially during college, was through the use of the media. So there's mm -hmm. a great opportunity to really use it and do good with it. So. And you mentioned evan the need to evangelize. You threw the word evangelize in there. And you know, Father Pascal, do you, do, you, do you get the same feeling that I get that it's really not a feeling, it's just a fact. Do you understand the truth like I do? And put it that way. No, that sounded bad. I didn't mean it that way. What I'm saying is, is evangelization yeah. is really about, is it not, either, either we embrace Christ or we embrace the world or the flesh or the devil. I mean, ultimately, it's one or the other. We're embracing God or we're embracing something else that's going to destroy us. It kind of boils down to that, doesn't it? Yeah, I've found in before, but especially in doing vocation direction, I'm the vocation director now for our community, that most of the guys are bringing, they're bringing skills to pay the bills. You know, they're, yeah. they're, already, yeah. they're already doing some kind of evangelization. That's sort of like media. a rap line. Yeah, you know, yeah. Skills to pay the bills. Yeah, well, yeah you gotta say uh, it that way. You know, <laughs> but we don't, we don't, as a community. Little attitude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as a community, we don't have a draft. Yeah. You know, people have, they elect to go into, you know, the service sure. of, you know, I don't, that's as far they as volunteer. I can go. It's all, it's all, it's a volunteer. Yeah, but, but it is order. that attraction uh, to using the media and just being able to enter into that world and to do that for God and to do that with God. And especially the, the big focus, as we said before, uh, of just the Eucharist and celebrating the liturgy well and, and just entering into just a world which is of God mm -hmm. and bringing, bringing that world down, you know, not, not bringing it more into the, the focus. So, so many people, like we were saying, are on their phones or whatever. How many people actually see the word God on that? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's through the social media trying to, to give some people a little light, a little beauty, a little goodness, even if it's just some, some other like quote about virtue or something like that, but especially to, to, to at least bring God into their conscious, you know, that 
they think of God. Yeah, because there's a real danger right now, isn't there, that, that our faith, that Christianity in general, but especially Catholicism, is optional. It's mm-hmm. one of those things where, you know, well, you can be, you know, a fanatic for this athlete or this sport mm-hmm. or this movie star or this particular belief mm-hmm. system, Hindu, Buddhist, blah, 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 yeah. or Christianity, Catholicism. Mm-hmm. It just kind of take your pick and one is as good as the other. And ultimately evangelization is it not is about really saying, look, there, there's one God mm-hmm. and this is, this is the path that's written on the heart of every man and woman. Right. And the battle for good and evil goes to the heart of every man and woman, and that, and in the end, it's it's heaven or hell. Mm-hmm. The bottom line, that's it. I mean, purgatory from purgatory to heaven, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, it, that's really what it boils down to, and that's why it's so important is not to evangelize, to make that clear. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. We, we want to win the world for Christ. Yeah. You know, yeah. right now ISIS is out there saying it's all about Allah and mm-hmm. and and Islam throughout the world and mm-hmm. Sharia law throughout the world, and they're adamant about it. Mm-hmm. We can't sit back and just be kind of comfy, cozy mm-hmm. with an attitude of well, take it or leave it if you mm-hmm. want, and we'll just kind of, you know, just mm-hmm. kind of hang out here and talk about it if you feel like it. We've got to be out there mm-hmm. in the streets with the love and the peace and the truth of this, right, Father? Mm-hmm. That's right, and that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. We're so very ahead. active, very, very in, active in this and. So all those young men who are yeah, discerning recruit. and thinking, pull hey, them in, pull them in. You know, go get them. We're all about communications, communicating God's love and whatever uh, means of the mass media we yeah. can. Any any medium, you know, the part of the brothers' formation, they learn a little bit about everything now. The news reporting, filmmaking, yeah. a little public relations and things like that. So hey, we're. We're, you know, we're gearing up in all these other different fields to, <laughs> public to re- preach. Public relations seems yeah. so important in today's world because there's so much confusion going on. Yeah. yeah. We have to do a little relations when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. Okay, why, uh, one la- last question. Uh, why is it necessary that every man, every single young man, take the time to discern whether or not God is calling him to the priesthood? At why, least to, at least to ask him, yeah. Why should a man at least ask God, are you calling me there? Yeah. Well... I, I guess I would say that the the best thing to do in life is to give give everything we can in in the way as best we can. So so uh, for for a lot of that we kind of short um, we we don't we second guess ourselves so much and when we look at and see see the priests I think a lot of us even ourselves that we say. You know, I don't think I could do that, but I think it's to remember, you know, God's the one that's doing the equipping, mm-hmm. you know, God's the one that's, that, that does this great work through us. And so to really, um, to really have more trust in God. And I, I think the priesthood, obviously it's, it's a beautiful life, but more than that, you do enter into this, this great battle and, and just, it's it's beautiful to see what happens, yeah. it just yeah. to enter into people's lives. And I like what you said there, Father. We second guess ourselves and think, oh, I couldn't do this. But really, it's God doing it through us. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. God doing it in us. God, God, God will amaze you, will astound you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And what he'll do inside you. Yeah, I yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely thrilling. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what no eye has seen or ear has heard, what God has prepared for those who love Him. Yeah. You know, and in, in, in this life, and of course in the next yeah. as well. That's awesome. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being on the show. God bless you. God bless you, Father. Brother John. (laughs) All right, we're going to wake him back. After this break, we have one more segment with uh, more of your uh, Catholic Franciscan Navy SEALs. On the show tonight, the Thanksgiving special. Don't go away. Back after this. Welcome back to Life on the Rock. This is our last segment of our very special Thanksgiving special. I'm Doug Barry, along with Father Mark. We are the Rock House Compadres. We have our third and final contestants on the Thanksgiving special game show. Yay! <laughs> we have Father Anthony. Good to have you, Father Anthony. And we have Clark. That's right. You are like, like, like two months approximately. 
Yeah, I'm pretty this. fresh. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then Brother Gabriel, you've been here about 11 months, roughly. That's right. Okay, all right. Clark, let's go to you first. Since you are standing out, one of these things is not like the other. Yeah. <laughs> all right. and, uh, and, and why are you not dressed like the others? He's a brother, okay, 11 right. months, but you are just a couple of months. You're still in the white shirt. A bit like a Jehovah Witness look there with the, uh, without the name not tag. not what I'm going for. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Um, uh, you know, not, no insult intended there at all. But, but you, are, you are not dressed in the habit. Explain why. Where yeah. you're at at the stage here. So I'm a postulant. That's what my title is. Uh, Brother Gabriel here is a novice, which, which is the next step. So as a postulant, I wear the white shirt, the khaki pants, and, uh, and then I get the habit in August. Ah, August. Yeah. All right. And if... Things go yeah, well. God willing, yeah. Yeah, but you're Canadian, so that may throw a wrench in the gears, right? Well, I made it this far. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, only, I'm only kidding about the Canadian part. Now, let's talk about the crucifix that you're wearing there. Sure. That is a standard operating Franciscan crucifix, the San Damiano Cross. Explain yeah. why that is such a, an iconic piece of uh, hardware, if you will, in, in, in regards to the Franciscan order. So this is a replica of the crucifix that... Uh, St. Francis, uh, it spoke to him and told him to rebuild his church. Mm -hmm. And so at first, St. Francis took that literally and started literally rebuilding with stones the church that he was in at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but he came over time to understand that in a more deep sense to rebuild the universal church. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, this is the cross that every postulant wears. Yeah. And it's really a reminder, too, that in their life they're being conformed to Jesus crucified. Mm -hmm. All right. yeah. This is what the Franciscan life is built upon. And, and you have been a priest how long, Father Anthony? For 14 years. Uh, you're one of those on TV all the time. You know, you're signing autographs out in front of the chapel every night. I'm just, just kidding. I'm just kidding. He isn't. Uh, but you, I'm usually locking up the chapel that's after what the it rest is. of them sign the autographs. That's what it is. That's what it is. Father Mark's signing the autographs. That's it. Doug, there's, a, you know, you think a lot of people, a lot of people do see us. But right. the funny thing is how God does keep us humble. There are many pilgrims who come here and they, they just see you in the parking lot and it's like, Father, I'm so glad to see you. And they'll talk to you for two or three minutes and tell you how wonderful you are. And then they'll say, well, take care, Father Mark. It's good to see you. <laughs> but there's no competition between you no, all, is there? No, no, well, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the, the Lord just keeps you right down there, you know. Well, it's like Father, like Father Joseph was saying earlier, they, they, he was over in Rome and they thought he was, uh, he was, um, Can't Father Cantillo Mesa. That's huh? it, that's it, yes, <laughs> trying to get into the Vatican somehow, so. Uh, but 14 years you've been a priest um, and you've been with the network, you know, that long and you've seen a lot of changes, you know, go on here. Um, what's it like having new postulants uh, come in and the process of seeing? Because that's your position, isn't it, to help uh, with, once they get in, to help uh, get the formation going? Somewhat. It's, uh, I'm, the, I'm still serving as our community servant, but Father Pascal as our vocation director would right. be the first contact for any young man uh, looking to be in touch with us. As they were saying on the previous segment, mm -hmm. they find us most often on our website. Uh, www.franciscanmissionariesoftheeternalword.com um, or just, I'm sorry, it's just franciscanmissionaries.com. Okay. But look for our whole title, Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal <laughs> Word. So let me say that again, www.franciscanmissionaries.com um, but or through personal contact with our friars traveling around. That's mm -hmm. how uh, Clark uh, encountered our community, Brother Leo was visiting in Canada, ran into Clark in mm. a certain setting and said, you need to come down to Alabama. Mm. So Clark did. Mm. And it's exciting uh, as they come in. Um, right now I'm working with our postulants and Father Miguel will work with them when they're novices. And then Father Leonard is working with the young men in temporary profession. Um, but to, uh, there is an excitement that comes into the house when a new man enters the community and shares our way of life. And to see them uh, growing into it and even growing in their re relationship with God, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. You know, I oftentimes, you know, um, compare, you know, the priesthood to, you know, I always talk about, you know, priests being the spiritual officers on the battlefield, spiritual battlefield. Um, going through seminary, for example, or a religious brother, in fact, taking vows of some sort, getting to a certain point where there's, there's, a, there's a certain formation and training there. I see ourselves more like in terms of a modern 
hippie who just says <laughs> love. And <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how we're going to connect yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> well, we need to talk about that off camera, brother. But, uh, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. No, but, <laughs> but there is something about when you look at, at military life and you look at, you look at a sports team, you look at military, if you look at any brotherhood yeah. where you see men coming together, where they lock arms in a dedicated goal, in a committed mission of some sort. And there's something about knowing that we're being trained, we're being formed, we know what the overall mission is, we're working together, we have different personalities. You know, my friend Tom Sullivan, who is the, the one who designed this great warrior rosary, <laughs> not trying to sound like a salesman here, but it's an amazing rosary, uh, the warrior rosary. He, um, he used to be a company commander and he trained 8,500 recruits in the Navy over a six year period, roughly. And he would talk about how they would come from all over the country, and in this case, all over the world, like Canada. And they come in, their hair is different, their language is different, their clothes are different, and then through time and serious formation and training, they all take the habit, or in their case, you know, the military sure. uniform, and then they march as a unit. Mm -hmm. And now they become a force to be reckoned with. And in the spiritual life, what you gentlemen have in this particular order, especially through the media, is so unique. It's got to be amazing to know and humbling to know that God has you in this position. Like Brother Gabriel, for yourself, I'll get to this, then Father's got a question, Father Mark. But what's it like to know that you're 11 months into this very unique position? I think it is very humbling, you know, as we, we've kind of heard a little bit today. But, uh, you know, certainly also the, the power and the weight, you know, of knowing that now you've become, you know, a witness to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, that the, the habit really does show itself as a, as a sign that there is something beyond this world. You know, and to, to be that witness to the world, you know, of Christ, you know, by growing in this greater imitation, you know, of him and his life is, you know, is very humbling. You know? Well, and a quick note on the habit for a passage to Father Mark here is I think about, you know, the United States Marine talk about 200 plus years of the Marine uniform. But you've been around since 1200, you know, St. Francis died in what, 1242 roughly, give or take. And you think about, was it Innocent III who had the division? Was it who, of the little man in the brown robe holding up the church? church. I mean, that's this brown robe. I mean, if you think about it, you're a successor to the little man in the brown robe holding up the church. That's pretty cool to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So what do you think, Clark? You want to go further, huh? Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Brother Mark? Well, you know, I can say, for me, seeing the younger guys enter, uh, as we see every week on this show, uh, young people have a generosity and idealism, and I think it fires up the whole community to see someone coming and, and giving their lives. And the brotherhood part, too, one thing I appreciate, you know, we have all these new priests ordained the last couple of years, is you can see how they bring their own personal gifts that God has given them in service of the church through the priesthood. And that's a beautiful, encouraging thing. And I, I think we're blessed in a community because uh, we can support one another and we can be exhorted, fired up by one another. And, and sometimes I find myself, um, you become more generous maybe just to help your brother you know, in his work, maybe he's doing a, a certain task and you want to help him because you, he's your brother, you know, in the vineyard, so to speak. So it's a wonderful support, you know, to have a, a community. And I think the diversity that uh, <laughs> we, the Lord puts these, this unique group of men together and you do get excited, mm -hmm. you know, you recognize, well, I can't do what he's doing, but God bless him. And mm -hmm. there's brothers that we're not seeing on the set tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our Seminarians off in Emmitsburg studying. Uh, Brother Tarsisius is finishing his college degree up there in Maryland. Uh, Father Dominic is away in Rome finishing off his degree in canon law. I'll come back as a doctor of canon law in the spring. God willing, Father Dominic, you hear that? We'll see you in the spring. <laughs> and uh, Father Patrick is uh, living with our seminarians and Brother Tarsisius and serving at the new uh, uh, effort there in Washington, D.C. with the News Nightly. The register, mm -hmm. CNA has a presence now. EWTN has a presence there in Washington, D.C. And Father Patrick is visiting them each week, uh, praying with the employees there, offering mass for mm -hmm. them, um, and then encouraging our, our men who are studying. Yeah. yeah. But it is, it, it motivates you to keep doing what God is calling you to do. I think in, I remind these men when they're in formation, that sometimes living in community, I'll be honest, can be a pain in the neck at some days, we're not going to lie. <laughs> um, but most of the days it can also be, uh, you know, your brothers can prod you on and encourage you even without saying anything. We come together to pray several times mm -hmm. during the day, 
we come together for our meal and uh, just to listen to the conversation uh, some days if you know, that's what you need just to keep carrying on and doing the Lord's work. Yeah, and A lot of times that's what our faith is just encouraging each other every day mm -hmm. just to keep your eyes on that ultimate goal, you know, set your mind on the higher things, not the things of this world, yeah, absolutely. as we're told. Uh, Clark, what so far in the first couple of months has surprised you? Anything that has surprised you about you mean besides being the here? weather? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're in Alabama now. You're not in Canada no more. Well, so. a short sleeve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's still summer here. <laughs> yeah. But what has surprised you once you've gotten in here? Anything surprised you um, about now that you're here that you didn't think was going to be? Um, well, I'd say the th main thing that brought me here was the media aspect, evangelizing th through the media. But uh, what's really been the biggest blessing uh, is more the prayer life and the community aspect. Mm -hmm. um, just having an hour or two of Eucharistic adoration every day has been probably the biggest blessing. Uh, serving at the Mass. Uh, we really put a lot of effort into the liturgies we do here, and uh, that's really the center of all we do. So uh, it's a pleasant surprise, I'd mm -hmm. say. Yeah, that's great. Um, Brother Gabriel, you, you have the habit now. Mm -hmm. You've been given that next step. How's that, how's that feel when you first put that on and you were out of the short sleeve white shirt with the tie? Well, it's a lot heavier for yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, in, in two different ways, one yeah. physically, but also yeah. spiritually too. Yeah. You know, because it, you, you are taking on a new life now. You realize that, you know, the old man's, you know, gone. My old name's gone. I'm now Brother Gabriel. You know, so that adds a certain, you know, weight to it, a, di a different way of life now that mm -hmm. I'm going to have to lead. You know, and I think overall just the, you know, the witness of that in my own life is what really kind of encouraged me was seeing holy priests. You know, I, I grew up very privileged to know a lot of holy African priests, you know, in my diocese, and they really encouraged me, you know, in my discernment and my faith. And, you know, I would say that that was one of the, you know, the greatest gifts that, that I received, mm -hmm. you know, because they always encouraged me to discern my vocation. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think also for young men to, to know you know, that they, they should, you know, discern, that they should be encouraged that, you know, a lot of times they, they think that it's something scary. You know, I don't want to take that next step because I don't know what it's going to be like. But, you know, really to step out in faith, you know, to be not afraid, mm -hmm. as Pope John Paul II often said, you know, but we also, you know, we're made for, for greatness, you know, as well, as Pope Benedict said. And, you know, not for small things, but for great things, for big yeah. things. And that's a great way of putting it is, you know, I think every young man out there does need to look at whether or not God is calling them to, to religious life, brotherhood, consecrated life, some mm -hmm. sort of a brother or a priest, because God has written it in our hearts and our DNA. We have 30 seconds, Father. What, what final encouragement would you have for others to take a look at this, uh, at your particular order and discern this? Well, I think that's the important thing is they just at least have to ask. Mm -hmm. So many times the world is keeping our young men preoccupied and busy with all kinds of mm -hmm. stuff, even the video games and whatever else, but to silence themselves and to ask the Lord, what are you asking me to do? How are you calling me to serve you? And in some way in their life, the Lord is going to manifest that for mm -hmm. them. And I'd encourage any young man, consider us. Come join us here in Alabama. What's that website again? www.franciscanmissionaries.com. FranciscanMissionaries.com. All right, gentlemen, it is an honor always to be with you all on the Thanksgiving special. I'm humbled to be here at the network for six and a half, going on seven years now, and to know you all and count you as friends. So thank you so thank much, you. Father. Thank you all. And Father Mark, as only you can. Well, may our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace, and may He fill your heart with gratitude for His providence. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you next week.